Right, so we've got a 36 horsepower fuel pump here. Uh, just so you know, uh, I've, I've already got this mostly done, but um, I'm going to go ahead and use this as the intro. Um, if you're going to do one of these, I'm going to tell you this is a scale maybe 9 out of 10 repair uh, as far as difficulty. So if you're going to try and attempt to do this yourself, uh, be ready to take a couple breaks, spend all day on this one. Uh, this is not easy to do, uh, but I will start with if you're uh, Going to do this job. I would not I would try and forego pushing this pin in um, If you push this in you, there's there's two parts in here that I'll show you later in the video um, that um, That are very difficult to put back in place and uh, if you do that I'll, I have instructions on how to do that later, but um what I would try to do is actually push this down, okay, and release the turn, you know, you do a twisting motion and take this uh, fuel pump piece, this lever that's moving up and down right now. If you look at your new one, you'll see there's just a plunger thing. You want to twist that off of this shaft. If you can do that without having to dis remove the, take the whole pump apart and take this pin out, do yourself a favor and forego doing that. It'll save you a lot of man hours. So if you do happen to take this pin out, I do have instructions on how to do that because what happened to mine was this pin actually slid out of place. If you're on the side of the road somewhere and this pin slid out, um, you might want to just tow your car because it's going to take you a lot of time to put this back together. A lot of patience and probably a vice. So anyway, uh, watch the rest of the video. And we'll see you on the next one. Make sure you comment, uh, even if you're, you know, or even if you're doing it, just say hi or whatever, because that does help the video on the search for the next person. I'll talk. To you. All right, so your good old 36 horsepower fuel pump rebuild. And some of you guys thinking, man, you know, I could do this myself. It's so easy. You know, it's just a little 10 minute job or something. First of all, it's if you take this pin out right here to replace this lever, you are so screwed. Um, well, if this lever is in good shape, leave it alone because when you go to take it apart, just replace the diaphragm A little trick there. Um, if you're thinking, man, I can just put one of these levers in and it is not easy. So the way you do it though, I'm just going to go over the way you do it. I don't know if I'm able to, I can't get in the video unless you want to watch me for two hours, try and play with this thing. Um, Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like a two-hour job or whatever. It just, whatever it takes. could take out all day. So what you do first is you put the spring in the hole. Then you take this fella and you actually put this in here. I'm If I'm doing this wrong, somebody correct me in the comments. But this is the way that I see. We went by this diagram right here. Um, it's on the Samba. And set this guy in place and it rubs against the side of there from what I can tell. And that's what actuates and runs the fuel pump. The rest of the stuff in here, this little stuff here is a check valve. Um, if I was me, you know, if this pin didn't slide on me, out on me on the highway um, and I was not having to take this pin out, I would never take this thing, this lever out unless it was completely worn out. I would just leave it alone and just grease it and put it back together and just put a diaphragm in it call it good so anyway just a little suggestion on your 36 or fire fuel pump talk to you guys in the next video please like share and subscribe so actually this is a little bit harder than i thought so i actually did get the pin in you have to use both um at the same time um yeah you got to get it all together and push it in. So what I did is I used this punch, one of these punches from Harbor Freight Tools, and then pushed this in with my thumb, held it in place, pushed this smaller punch in there, got it in place, and then used the pin to push the punch back out. And then I got this in. Now, the only thing is, is what I realize is because I've never had one of these apart, is this thing actually hooks on that pin right there. 
This is the 36 horsepower fuel pump. So, man, you guys, if you're in for doing one of these yourself, um, you know, it's not easy. So, somehow I have to get this thing hooked over that. Now, I don't know if it's possible to do it without having it back, having the pin back out. Um, if I can push this down with the spring, because I have to have the spring on here. So you got to have the spring, this thing on here, and have that in here, and have that thing hook over the other. Now, I don't know if I can do this with uh, without taking it all apart again, which I'm afraid to do because it was really hard to get that to line up. Um, and again, like I said, if you guys are messing with one of these, uh, be glad to pay a couple hundred dollars to somebody to have them do it. What? A couple hundred dollars? Yeah, unless you uh, want to hassle with this yourself, um, you're going to spend a good all day just doing this one little job. So, here's the deal. I think this is how this, see how that thing's bent. So you get this thing on here, you see how that thing's bent. I think, and we'll do this without the spring so we can kind of see. Um, what you do is you put the spring on and then you have to twist it. Put it in, put it in place, get it over it and twist it twist it onto the twist it onto here that's how i think it's supposed to be done so this is your 36 horsepower fuel pump if you guys are wondering my pin pushed out on mine this all came apart and i could not um tell um i could not tell how it went together so but this is how it goes from what i can tell and then with the spring in place, you have to twist this thing on. So, if you're rebuilding one of these again, uh, like I said, this is a, a, a this is a pretty hard job to do, um, and I'm pretty good at this stuff. And this is like up there as being one of the hardest things I've ever done on the VW. Uh, one of those things that I think the suicide rate was pretty high um, on the guys assembling these, so they had to rotate people around in the shop in VW plant. So. Just so you know, they actually did that. They rotated people around because there was... <laughs> Could you imagine trying to do one of these things all day? I mean, it would just be horrible, you know. I mean, you'd probably get pretty good at it, but I don't know if you could really get good at this. This is really hard to do. So, you got to twist that thing around. And I think that's why that's bent that way. So, you just kind of twist it around and put it on. So, I'll play around with this a little bit longer. And then, if I see anything else, I'll put this in the video. All right, so that was the trick. The little bend on there, just got it down just right and got lucky and it hooked. So um, getting these two in, I had to do both of these as one assembly. The other two parts um, that we were looking at uh, that I was, and then this goes in there like that. And then make sure when you get done with your fuel pump that you peen this really, really good around here so that because uh like you can't just put silicone or anything on here because it moves just a little bit and if it moves just a little bit it'll it'll actually you might want to use silicone to hold it in place after you peened it really good so peen both sides of this really good then take your uh your brush with grease and grease everything in here really good because you don't want this to wear out um because there is no lubricant in here, this part of the uh, fuel pump so you want to get your little brush with um, acid brush with grease grease everything up really good before you assemble it uh, then your noted your filter actually fits in here at this it goes down in here there's that little this little nut here and that has your filter inside there so there is a filter kind of a screen so if you're wondering about that on a 36 horse um so anyway that's how you actually assemble that fuel pump if you're wondering uh if you can actually be fortunate enough not to take this off if you're if you can if yours if this little lever is in good shape on yours um you might not want to push that pin out when you go to take it apart um what i would do is try and pry up on here push this you have to push this thing in maybe use a pair of um, needle nose vice grips to hold it in place all the way down 
and then then twist and use a screwdriver and actually twist and pull this lever here off of that little lever so that you're not having to disassemble this part of the pump because I'm going to tell you right now if you take that pin out right there you're in for a nightmare you're going to be going oh my god I'll never get this thing put together and yeah yeah it's not easy all right so I'll talk to you guys in the next video please like share and subscribe all right so you can see here we actually peened it until a little piece of metal was hanging over the edge um and that's what i tried to do i tried just crushing it with the vise and i could kind of push the pin back out really gently with a hammer and chisel or this pin punch here the punch that i use to uh line up the pin and um what i'm gonna do now is i'm actually gonna gonna use this stuff this is adhesive systems rp100 this is a super 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 glue more than your regular super glue i'm actually going to put super glue on the end of here and hopefully it'll keep that from turning or moving at all and then i'm going to put silicone over that to make sure that and of course i've cleaned this and dried it with uh carburetor cleaner um right here and uh then to make sure that that pin doesn't come out now it's one of those things if you have a 36 horsepower motor um i, I have no idea why they didn't put a a pin on here with a with a stop on one end and a c-clip on the other you know like basically like a nut end you know so that it would just go on and stay on and then have a uh, c-clip on the other side or two c-clips or something uh the fact that this is made this way is kind of mickey mouse but that was vw's I and mean, they did a lot of weird crap uh, this engineering for this little pull pin and all this kind of ridiculous so um that's one of those one of those ones that I guess you know one of the weird Volkswagen things. I mean, they had some really good engineered things. Some things were very poorly engineered, and this is one of them. So anyway, that's what I'm going to do. I have no idea how long it's going to last, but I would try and do everything possible to try and make sure that that pin doesn't come out. Because if it does come out on the road, it'll you know you won't be driving, and you certainly won't be fixing that on the side of the road.